There's been a lot of talk among boxing fans about the possibility of this Guillermo Rigondo Vasil Lomachenko fight over the past couple of years. Because in these two fighters, you've got two of the best amateurs in history, really. I mean, their amateur records are incredible. Since turning pro, the fans have been saying, when are we going to see them in the ring together? Both of them managed to win world titles very early on in their pro careers. Lomachenko, I believe it was in his, was it his third fight he won a world title? I know he lost to Salido, I think, in his second fight, first or second fight, then he won a world title shortly after. Rigondo won a world title, I think, maybe in his fifth or sixth fight, something like that, going off memory. However, as much as people have wanted to see this fight, it looked as though weight would stop the fight happening. And even me, fairly recently, I've been saying I can't see the fight happening. There's too much of a difference in weight. Rigondo was talking about having to fight at a catch weight for the longest. He wasn't willing to move up in weight. He wanted Lomachenko to come down. And given the fact that Lomachenko is much naturally bigger than Rigondo, and he really is, he fought as a lightweight in the amateurs, whereas Rigo fought as a bantamweight in the amateurs. So Rigo turned pro as a bantamweight, coming out of the bantamweight division as an amateur, whereas Lomachenko turned pro coming out of the lightweight division as an amateur. So he had to drop quite a lot of weight when he first turned professional. And given that weight disparity, I thought it was reasonable for Rigo to be asking him for a catch weight. Uh, But it seemed as though Lomachenko wasn't willing to fight at a catch weight because, you know, as I say, he's a big guy. He's already cutting a lot of weight to get down in weight. But now Rigo seems to have changed his tune about the catch weight. He seems to have changed his tune about moving up in weight. And it's really, as far as I'm concerned, quite simple to see why, <laughs> quite obvious. And that is he needs to make some money while he still can. Rigondo must be, what, 36, 37 years old now, something like that. Time is ticking. He's not in a weight division where there's a hell of a lot of uh, fan interest. So whatever money he can make, he needs to make it as soon as humanly possible. So now I'm going to quote, a guy called Alex Baronti, who is an advisor to Guillermo Rigondeau. And he's talking about the fact that, yeah, Guillermo Rigondeau all of a sudden is not only willing to move up to 126 pounds to face Lomachenko. He's actually willing to move up to 130 pounds to face Lomachenko. 126 pounds, that's featherweight. 130 pounds is super featherweight. This guy's willing to move all the way up through the divisions to get this fight because he needs that paper. That's what this is all about, people. And now he is, I believe, working with Rock Nation. I'm not sure exactly the ins and outs of that relationship, but he certainly fought on the Rock Nation card last time out. So maybe he feels he can get a big payday off Rock Nation the same way that Andre Ward did. You know, so maybe that maybe that's also motivating it. Anyway, let me quote Alex Barante. Excuse me if I'm butchering that surname. He is the advisor to Guillermo Rigondeau. He says, we have told Lomachenko and his manager, Igis Klimas, that we are ready to go up to 130 pounds. Is that not what they asked for to do the fight? Well, we're indulging them. The ball is in their court. Let's see what they do. Rigo can climb to 126 or 130 to fight there without having to drop his 122 pound belt. Right now, we are reviewing all of the possible alternatives, but the main objective is Lomachenko. So there you have it from Rigondeau's advisor. They're willing to move up to 126 or 130 to make this Lomachenko fight happen. I've said all along, I think, unless it's at a catch weight, Lomachenko is just going to be too big for Rigondeau because Lomachenko is extremely skilled. It's not like he's just a big guy, a guy who's bigger than Rigondeau. No, he's a guy who's extremely skillful. I don't think he's, he's, he's a more of a combination puncher than Rigondeau, but in terms of single punches, I think Rigondeau's faster. That straight left hand that Rigondeau has is extremely quick and it's hard too. You know, Rigondeau will hurt you with that left hand. 
He's conservative with his power punches, which is probably why he don't have that many knockouts on his record. But don't be fooled and think Rigando can't punch. He can punch. Just ask Nanito Doné if Rigando can punch. He can punch. Ask Jazza Dickens if he can punch. You know, Rigando can bang. It's just that, as I say, he's conservative with his power shots, so he doesn't tend to get that many KOs. But, um, yeah, let me know what you think of this, people. This fight, all of a sudden, is a more realistic possibility, given the fact that Rigando's willing to move up to 126 or 130. No catch weights, nothing. Would there be a rehydration clause, though? Who knows? But just the fact that he's willing to move up to those weights, that says a lot. You know, he, he needs to make some money and make it fast. And that's what he's thinking about. Drop your comments in the comment section below, people. Let me know what you think about this. Who would win the fight if it did take place? Let me know. It's happening. I'm out.